Hi there, Scanner Flyers. It's Tim here. Check out this 3D model. In this video, I'll show you how to capture data to create this 3D mapped environment for your next solar project. We'll go over the basic settings that we recommend in your favorite flying app, then go over the best practices for capturing high quality data to produce that high quality 3D model. Let's dive right in. Be sure to follow all regional and local laws and be aware of the airspace you're flying in. For more information, please visit our support page. First, we will discuss on basic settings that we recommend using on the DJI GO 4 app when flying with the Mavic Pro, Mavic Pro 2, and Phantom 4 for residential sight and scan fly. The DJI GO 4 app is a free application that DJI makes that works with Android and iOS, so there is no need to purchase any additional software if you have these models. After discussing some basic settings, we will fly the drone to capture photos for Scanafly using the point of interest and time photo modes on the drone. Before we get into the air, we want to make sure that we have the DJI GO 4 app installed on the smartphone or tablet of your choice and connected to the controller while the drone and controller are powered on. The application should automatically start up, but if not, you can open it manually. Once you're inside the app, you should be able to enter the live camera view of the drone and adjust the settings of the drone of the application. At first, you will notice that there are a lot of menus to explore. We highly recommend taking the time to explore these menus in more detail. This video will only focus on the most important settings for capturing with Scanafly. There are a few menus inside the application that are important to understand here. The first menu is the status bar. The status bar is important to see if your drone has a GPS or compass issues or is operating as normal. The second menu is the main settings menu. This menu has all of the settings related to the hardware of the drone itself, except for the camera, such as the obstacle avoidance settings or return to home settings. This is where you can turn off or on the beginner mode, and this is also where you can access the advanced flight modes if you have recently purchased a drone from DJI. It will need to be turned on in this menu. Additionally, you want to make sure that your drone's return to home height is sufficiently high enough to return to home without hitting obstacles or violating the airspace you may be flying in. The third menu that is important to us is the Intelligent Flight Modes menu. This is where you can access the automated point of interest mode and other intelligent flight modes on the drone. We will discuss this in more detail later in the video. The fourth menu that is important to us is the Camera Settings menu. Here you can control all of the settings related to the camera. For example, you can adjust the camera settings from automatic to manual, if you have experience with photography, you can use this to take more evenly exposed photos in challenging lighting environments. We recommend that you turn the overexposure warning and the crosshairs in the camera settings menu, which you can access here. The crosshairs help lining up photos and the overexposure warning creates a visible zebra stripe pattern on the screen when the phone is too bright. What this means is that the portion of the image is too bright to be used when photography or scanify reconstruction. We also recommend using the interval photo mode in the application to make it easier to capture photos while flying. Typically three to five seconds is best to use. Now that we've reviewed the basic settings of the application and turned to the overexposure warning, crosshairs and interval photo timer, we are ready to take off and capture our site for Scanafly. We want to make sure that we have a safe takeoff and landing location and that we have a clear view of the site to maintain a visual line of sight of the drone at all times. Our goal is to orbit the site twice once further away for the context flight and once closer to the detail flight. First, we need to fly above the site and point the camera directly down using the gimbal adjustment on the left rear of the controller. Then we will open the intelligent flight mode menu and select the point of interest mode. Now we will set the point of interest and pull back on the right stick, the radius of the circle, until the entire site is in frame, including the facades and surrounding area, and press start. We will fly our drone around the point of interest at the defined radius and altitude with its nodes pointed in the middle. It's, we recommend moving around two to five miles an hour to give yourself enough time to collect images in a single revolution. Now press the capture button to initiate the time to photo function so the drone captures photos automatically as it orbits around the site. Once you have completed one full orbit, Stop the photo capture of the drone by clicking the camera button again. Here are the photos that we took with the Mavic Pro. We took a total of 96 photos. Notice how there are a lot of similarities between the photos. That is called a high overlap. You want to have a high overlap in your photos when capturing for Scanafly. We have collected the photos for the context flight. Now we want to capture the details of the roof more closely by flying a detailed orbit flight. The detail orbit flight is similar to the context orbit flight, except it has flown closer to the structure to give the model more detail. Using the right stick, decrease the radius of the POI circle, and then use the left stick to lower the altitude of the drone so the drone is orbiting the site at a closer distance. Reinitiate the photo capture by clicking the shutter button. 
You may need to lower the orbit speed or increase the frequency of the photo timing depending on how you, close you are to the structure. In our second flight, we took 75 images. When you have finished the orbit, exit the point of interest mode and return to home. So there you have it. We took roughly 176 images today with the Mavic Pro and the DJI GO app. We learned how to use the point of interest mode, interval capture, and also covered some key settings in the DJI GO 4 app. The best way to learn how to connect images is to go out there firsthand and practice. You will continue to get better at taking these photos and understanding how to navigate a site with your drone. The most important things to remember are to keep your drone away from obstacles and obstructions, take plenty of photos with plenty of overlap, and fly two flights at each site minimum, one context flight to build out the site and one detailed flight to fill in the feature. After a few flights, you will find it is easy to model a site for Scanifly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.